basically Ohio State had the arrogance to say, we've got two NFL tackles and we can leave them on an island. They can block Hutchinson and Ajabo, which made no sense to me because they got three NFL wide receivers who are making all the catches. Their tight end's great. Jeremy Ruckert, Ohio State, he'll be playing in the NFL too, but he caught one pass for like two yards. Keep him in. Let him help. The, those three wide receivers are doing enough damage. You got to protect those two tackles. I want to see if Georgia, I, I got to think Kirby Smart went to his offensive line coach and said, can our tackles really handle those guys? And if they can't, you, you, I'm leaning on you to tell me, are they better than Ohio State's tackles? Because those guys are pretty good, but they couldn't handle them. Yeah. Will Anderson had one sack in the SEC title game. If Hutchinson has one sack, I'm, you know, great. Uh, you know, but they, Michigan, see, and I get a lot of hate for this on my channel, but I think overall Michigan has a better defense than Alabama. Now, it's hard to say for sure because in college football, there's two, you, you play totally different schedules and all that. So right. you can't you can't say, well, this team only gives up 300 yards and this team gives up 310, so the 300-yard team is better. Well, you don't really know that, but all Michigan's higher ranked in almost every defensive category this year than Alabama. <clears throat> and obviously they got the two guys on the outside that are just unbelievable. Um, so, uh, w w we'll see, but, uh, I don't know how much, well, I can tell you this, Stetson Bennett's not dropping back to throw the ball 55 times like he did against Alabama. I mean, that, that was insane. Any argument you can make to play Stetson Bennett at QB does not involve him throwing, dropping back to throw 50 something times. I mean, if that was the plan, then it's even worse that you didn't play JT Daniels. I mean. That, that's just insane. I mean, Stetson, we were beating these teams earlier in the year, and, you know, Stetson Bennett would be 14 of 19 for 210 yards and a couple of touchdowns. You send him out there, throw, drop back 50-something times. He tipped at 49 passes, but by the time you account for the sacks and the times are he you, took off, Bramley, he dropped back 50, uh, 55 times in that game to throw the ball. Stetson did. That's insane. Won't yeah, be doing I that mean, against Michigan. Obviously, he's not a guy that you want throwing that much, or or that, and that's just not – Georgia's game plan, right? They they want to run the ball. Um, so are you are you thinking the game plan should try to be pounded in between the tackles? Are you trying to you know do zone uh, a little zone stretch or something like that? What what would you say the best game plan is against this defensive line and in, in Michigan's uh, you know pretty pretty dang good defense? I think in the first quarter at least Georgia's going to line up and just try to run right at them and, yeah. and see what they do. If Georgia's averaging four yards a carry at the end of the first quarter. And, and, and really, you could probably say the same thing for Michigan. Yeah, I mean, I, totally I, don't, I don't expect McNamara to throw the ball 40 times. You know, uh, you're probably going to see 50 passes total in this game, maybe, between both teams combined. You know, um, yeah. I mean, whoever's able to run the ball, it just sounds cliche and old school, uh, which is kind of weird. Georgia and, and, and Michigan both playing kind of old school football right now, uh, you know, football from 10 years ago, pound the ball between the tackles, play action pass, a couple of QB scrambles here and there. Um, but I, yeah, I, th I think both teams are going to try to do the same thing at least early and, you know, which defense can hold up, uh, you know, which offense maybe can, can break a big play early in the game. And maybe, I mean, that's what happened to Georgia against out, you know, we got behind 14 to a team that can score, you know, every time they snap the ball and Kirby panicked, threw the game plan out the window and started slinging the ball around the rest of the game. Neither team wants to do that uh, here, so we'll see. Yeah, I, I know as far as watching Georgia in the SEC championship game, you guys have a monster weapon. And I, I know George Pickens is a great athlete and Washington is a great athlete, but that tight end, uh, I believe it's Brock Bowers, he was un nobody in the Alabama linebackers uh, secondary could touch that guy. He and he's a true freshman, right? Like yeah. he, if I were if I were Kirby Smart, you know, the, the it obviously is going to be run game number one, but I would be targeting number nineteen quite a bit in that game because he he is he. Yeah. I mean, he's top notch. I, I I've. I've yet to see much like him at the tight end position, especially as a true freshman. He's incredible. Um, I, I That would be a huge part of the game plan would be to get Bowers the ball early and often. Yeah, I think so, too. He's been probably our our best and most consistent. Well, he's, he's the leading receiver on the team. 
uh, as a tight end, you know. And in the SEC championship game, he was targeted 16 times. The wide receivers were targeted 17 times total. So they, they threw the ball to Brock almost as much as they threw it to every wide receiver combined, um, which I think that's a little too – you got to get the wide receivers the ball too, but – uh Stetson kind of locked in on him but for whatever reason Georgia had a matchup advantage I don't know what uh, I'm not an X's and O's guy I, I'm just I'm just a fan so I can't tell you what Bama was doing defensively or whatever but obviously they were having a hard time finding a linebacker or a safety or anybody really well that could man I, up on Bowers how, how do you find a guy that's six foot eight and can run a four <laughs> five forty to keep yeah. up with him right yeah yeah <laughs> Un unreal and, and yeah. you know I I, I can I, consider myself pretty knowledgeable when it comes to Georgia and its roster and its recruiting and stuff like that. I had no clue who Brock Bowers was really until a week before the Clemson game. Um, you know, cause you had the Eric Gilbert stuff went down and he was gone and Darnell Washington got hurt in the preseason. And I was like, well, who's playing tight end? And I started seeing stuff pop up about this Brock Bowers kid. And I was like, great. You know, true, relying on a true freshman playing <laughs> Clemson. And I didn't know Clemson was going to be as bad as they were, but, uh, and yet, so it started right away in week one. I mean, he had, I don't remember how many catches he had against Clemson, but it was, it was pretty obvious right away that Georgia had something with Brock Bowers. Yeah. And I'm trying was... to think does who I'm, I'm trying to think who Michigan's going to try and put on him. I know, you know, we had junior Colson on our podcast this week and he's a, a freshman, but he's speedy and Nakai Hill green is also young, but, but speedy as well. Whereas Josh Ross is the senior but can't move uh, not his, near, yeah. not as well, you know? So I, I'm I, thinking I would, they try to put one of those young guys on him. Honestly, I would think because when I look at the Big Ten championship, you know, Dax Hill played a lot of that, uh, you know, Viper, kind of the, the overhang outside linebacker, you know, whatever whatever you want to call it. It's, it, yeah. it has multiple names in different systems. But I would imagine you probably want – I mean – because in a game like this, when it's win or go home and, and the win gets you to the national championship, you just have to put best on best. And I, I think inside, you know, because that's probably where Bowers is going to be, I would imagine you probably want Dax Hill there because, number one, the, the you know, pass game matchup. But also, two, that's pr most times, you know, wherever Bowers lines up, that's probably going to be the running strength as well. Right. And that's Dax true. Hill is, is solid in, in run run support as well. That that would probably you know if, if just thinking about it just off the top of my head I would imagine that that's what the matchup would be but you know I I think one thing with with Mike McDonald he's done a phenomenal job of adapting of letting guys play free kind of you know run around and, and just use their athleticism you know we there's been so much talk about Aiden Hutchinson and how he's been able to be just just unleashed and not been in that Rashawn Gary spot where you know you, you're two gap reading and it's just yeah. go get the quarterback man just go get him and I, I mean you look at it now and he's been one of the most dominant guys in in college football and, and you know potentially a number one pick in the NFL draft so um it, it, it'll be interesting to see but that I think that's the cool part of when you get to high level football with you know two teams ranked number two and three in the country at the end of the season that that's the cool part is to see you know are we going to be able to see you know, a five-star kid in, in Dax Hill and also a five-star kid in, in, you know, Bowers go head-to-head -head and, and see who's who's better. That's that's the, the cool part here. 